Hello, IGNU MAPC first year students from the July 2023 and January 2024 batches. Welcome to Samvedna Psyche. Are you still struggling to complete your MPC 005 research methods assignment? Well, in this video, I'll be sharing the fully solved assignment answers to help you breeze through the task. And don't worry if you haven't started writing assignments yet. Your assignment submission date is extended to April 30th, 2024, giving you plenty of time. So grab your pen and paper and let's get started on acing this assignment together. A reminder before you start writing to include the title page and the question paper. I will scroll down slowly so that you can take the screenshots as I'll not be going in detail of the answers. Before writing the answers, mention the subject along with subject code, tutor marked assignment, course code, assignment code. Section A, question one, define sampling, discuss different methods of sampling. Before you start writing the answer, remember to leave a left margin of three to four centimeters. And after every answer, leave a space of three to five lines. Do include diagrams wherever necessary. We will start with the definition. Sampling is a systematic process of selecting a subset of individuals from a larger population with the aim of studying them to draw conclusions about the entire population. Sampling methods are mainly of two types. First, non-probability methods and second, probability sampling methods. We'll start with the first one, non-probability sampling methods. These do not allow for determining the likelihood of elements or groups to be included in the sample and do not permit estimating how well sample characteristics represent the overall population. These are of various types, convenience sampling, quota sampling, purposive sampling, snowball sampling, and systematic sampling. Then second method, Probability sampling methods, these ensure unbiased selection of sample units by clearly defining the likelihood of including each element or individual. And this results in reducing the sampling errors and assessing the sample results for precision, accuracy, efficiency, and for making conclusions which are suitable for generalization and comparison with similar type of populations. Types, simple random sampling, stratified random sampling, and cluster sampling. And with this, you conclude your first answer. Question two, discuss the steps involved in research process. Research is a systematic approach and it involves several interconnected steps, which I have discussed point-wise, starting with identification of the problem, formulating a hypothesis, identifying, manipulating, and controlling variables, formulating a research design, constructing devices or tools for observation and measurement, sample selection and data collection, data analysis and interpretation, drawing conclusions, and lastly, preparation of report and publication. And after this, conclude your answer. Question three, discuss the meaning, types, and relevance of qualitative research. Explain the ethical guidelines in qualitative research. We'll start with meaning. This aims to explore and understand phenomena in their natural setting. Briefly describe the meaning. Then come to types. There are different types of qualitative research, including case study, ethnography, historical method, grounded theory, and phenomenology. Next is relevance of qualitative research in psychology. Qualitative research is very important for understanding human nature, their behavior, and experiences. And it provides textual description of people's experiences, helps to identify and explain social norms, gender roles, socioeconomic influences, and religious beliefs. It helps in understanding unquantifiable phenomena. The data 
collection is done in natural setting and it helps in determining meaningful factors. Ethical guidelines, respect for respondents, cultural sensitivity, transparency and informed consent, confidentiality, beneficence and non-maleficence, risk-benefit analysis, and community engagement. And then conclude your answer. Now let's move on to section B. Section B, question four, criteria and misconceptions of case studies. First criteria, it relies on information-oriented sampling. Emphasis is placed on deeper causes and consequences. Researcher consider critical cases that highlight important aspects of the phenomenon or extreme or deviant cases that offer contrasting perspective. And researcher decides whether to conduct single case or multiple case studies or whether to keep the case holistic or incorporate some embedded subcases. Misconceptions about case studies. A very common misconception is the theoretical knowledge gained through case study is more important than the practical knowledge. Another misconception is that the case studies are good for generation of hypothesis, but not for hypothesis testing or developing a theory. Many critics believe that they are susceptible to confirmation bias due to researchers' preconceived notions. And there is difficulty in generalization. While findings may not apply universally, but still they hold theoretical understanding with contextual insights and illustrative examples. And then conclude your answer. Question five, types of variables. First, stimulus organism and response variable. Stimulus variables are external factors that result in a response. Organism variables are the physiological or psychological characteristics of individual and response variables are observable behaviors or actions of the organism in response to a stimulus variable. Independent and dependent variables. Independent variables are manipulated by the researcher to observe the effect on the dependent variable and dependent variables vary according to the change in the independent variable. Extraneous and confounded variable. Extraneous variables are factors other than the independent variable which can influence the dependent variable and potentially they also confound the result. And confounding of variables occur when the effects of two variables become intertwined and it becomes difficult to find out their individual effect. Active and attribute variables. Active variables are manipulated by the researcher, such as rewards or teaching methods, while attribute variables are inherent characteristics of the individuals which cannot be manipulated. Quantitative and categorical variables. Quantitative variables vary in amount and can be measured precisely, while categorical variables vary in kind or category. Continuous and discrete variables. Continuous variables can take on any value within a range and can be measured with arbitrary precision. And discrete variables have distinct categories or values with clear gaps between them. Question six, advantages and disadvantages of quasi-experimental design. We'll start with advantages. First, they have practicality in social science. They are complementary to case studies. They provide resource efficiency as they reduce the time and resource required for experimentation. They enhance external validity by replicating natural settings. These enhance external validity. And the last one, they provide a means to identify general trends in complex social phenomena. Disadvantages. They have limited causal inference. Without proper randomization, they provide results which are difficult to interpret causally. Threats to internal validity due to absence of random assignment, new threats to internal validity can be generated. Difficulty in controlling variables, inability to establish causation, and limited applicability in certain contexts. Question seven, types of questions that can be used in a survey research. Types of questions that can be used are divided into two main categories. 
structured questions and unstructured questions. Structured questions are meticulously planned and predefined in format. They have a clear set of response options. Types of structured questions. They can be dichotomous questions, which have only two possible choices like yes or no, true or false, etc. Next, level of measurement based questions. This includes nominal questions, which classify respondents into categories without any inherent order. Ordinal questions, which require ranking or preference, and interval questions, which involve rating or scaling. Third type, filter or contingency questions. These lead respondents through a series of subsequent questions based on their initial responses. Second type, unstructured questions. These are open-ended and flexible questions. And then you will conclude your answer. Question A, types of correlational research design. These designs are very important in exploring associations and predicting outcomes without necessarily implying causation. And types are, first, association between two variables. Next, association amongst more than two variables. And the last, prediction using regression analysis. After this, you'll conclude your answer. Let's move on to section C. Section C, difference between causal comparative and experimental research design. Although both aim to establish cause and effect relationship, but still they differ in their methodology. And then you'll write briefly about the difference. Question 10, types of hypothesis. Here you will mention about null and alternative hypothesis. Types of validity, here you have to mention all the types, that is, Content validity, criterion related validity, construct validity, as well as internal and external validity. Reliability, here you have to define or write down the meaning of reliability. Types of survey research, there are two main types, cross-sectional surveys and longitudinal surveys, so write about them. Question 14, quantitative research designs. In this, you have to mention what are these research designs and what they aim to. Question 15, factorial designs. Here you have to tell the use of factorial design and what they do. Question 16, definition of research design. Here define research design, field experiment. What are these and what is the importance that you have to mention here? Question 18, research biases. Here mention what are research biases and how they affect the result and judgments. With this, we have completed the assignment solution for MPC-005 research methods. I'll also be sharing MPC-006 shortly. Before we wrap up, remember that completing your assignment is just one step in your academic journey. Take pride in your hard work and dedication and continue to strive for excellence in your studies. If you found this video helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up and share it with your batchmates. Stay tuned for more helpful content and until next time, keep learning and growing. Thank you.